change the entire data from secondary to primary you will have to initiate a failover for that and failover changes everything you know failover gets your secondary to primary primary to secondary readjust that and then you can let's say go ahead and access your data out there Again, uh, one most important thing tool or one of the most important tool that we actually use out here is that, you know, when you work with an organization and when your client tells you that, you know what, my storage account is actually not working. Can you please let me know whether that particular region is available or not or whether that service is available or not or is there some kind of an outage out there? What we do is that there is a website called status.azure.com by Microsoft and it tells you what is the status of a particular service in a given region? Let's say I'm I'm interested into something a region like East US 2 where I've configured all my data and just scroll down Under storages, you'll have something called storage accounts all green It tells you okay fine. You know what the service is available The first troubleshooting that I'll start with is to check whether the service is available in a particular region called East US Is it in central US? Yes, this is great this is what it tells you green is good i is informational meaning i'm just giving you some kind of an information that patching is being done on extra warning and critical and this website gets refreshed every two minutes to give you a particular status out here so when i'm actually let's say troubleshooting something the first thing i'll go is into something called status.azure.com and check this out again i'm posting this link in the chat window you can go here and this has all the services that azure has to offer and also the health of all the services what Azure has to offer uh, You can let's say look at this and now let's say you can identify whether that particular service is down or not And these are all the regions that are there in Americas You have something called Americas you have Europe Asia Pacific in Asia Pacific you have you, you'll also see something like you know India and all these things out here in Asia Pacific APAC regions out here West India South India Central India Middle East and Africa Azure government primarily for US government and etc Azure China only for let's say the region called China out here and then you have the geo data centers since geo is let's say working with Azure right now all the customers all, all the database of geos are let's say in Azure right now they have provisioned separate data centers for geo India which is West India and Central India out here where if you take a mobile connection and all these things your data will primarily get into these particular data centers out there and Azure is also giving you an idea on what are the services that you can go ahead and let's say create in this particular in data center called geo and What how what is the health of this particular service and it is giving you all this information out here regarding those services as such so when you are working with different companies or when you're working with a client Please come here check whether the service is available or not if the service is not available Please immediately raise a ticket with Microsoft work with Microsoft and get your questions answered with that So that's what we normally do or that's what we have we normally tend to do out there Yes, any questions till your Yeah, hi Karan mm, God please yeah, in this uh, status Azure portal, uh, mm -hmm. we, we need to raise the ticket to Microsoft or Microsoft by itself, uh, their own team to check the status and all, right? Because this is globally, right? Correct. Okay, this is globally. So what really happens is that if there is a major outage, Microsoft proactively goes there and sends across an, sends across an email to you telling that, hey, you know what, uh, we have an outage, we are working on that, so don't worry about that and all these things. Microsoft will proactively go ahead and send emails out to you there but let's say you have identified something meaning before Microsoft does you go ahead and identify something out here you can also go ahead and raise a ticket with them telling that you know what my service I see or for, for something for sometimes what happens is that even though the service is telling it is healthy for some reason we might have a suspicion that probably the service is not recovered completely so I want to raise a go ahead and raise a ticket with Microsoft you can also do that to seek their assistance but usually it is proactive they go ahead and let's say proactively tell you that the service is not available and we're working on that and all, that, all those things out there but sometimes you might also have to let's say raise a ticket with Microsoft I'll also show you how to create tickets with Microsoft out there okay 
a business standpoint so someone's asking a question that business standpoint mostly prefer grs and gzrs yes correct from a business standpoint if your application is critical please use grs or gzrs if failover occurs in lrs then there is an option to recover very importantly lrs doesn't support a failover lrs is only a local redundant storage by the definition of it you only have one data center so the the concept of failover is virtually not possible so if i change this back to lrs i won't even get this so if you look at this one let's go back into configurations and change it back to lrs out here <laughs> the concept of failover virtually disappears out there there is no concept of failover out there in lrs so again it'll take like about 30 seconds to come into effect and if you look into the overview page i have my data center only in ecs no secondary data center no concept of failover just scroll down geo replication ecs2 you do not even see a button called prepare for failover no there is no failover at all geo replication is available only for gzrs ra gzrs and etc under this you can let's say replicate your accounts to let's say different data centers out there Yes, any questions to your anyone any questions? Uh, initially they have preferred for LRS, right? Now for just for right. data loss, we're changing it to GRS. But again, when right. we have to change it to LRS? Because they are, uh, they are uh, preferring LRS. Right, so if, if the preference is LRS, uh, yes, you can change it to RA GRS for, let's say, if the primary region is not available, you change your account to, let's say, RA GRS. After the primary region is available back, you can do a failover one second, meaning you can do a fail back one second. You can change your endpoints from primary to secondary, secondary to primary, and then get your storage account back into LRS. You can do that. And uh, also to you know just address to your question, when you prepare a failover, when you go and hit a failover button out here, the account automatically changes itself to LRS. It will go ahead, sit in something called as a secondary endpoint and changes automatically itself to LRS out there because you cannot copy the data into a data center which is not available so microsoft goes ahead and in order to try to reduce your cost it will automatically change it to let's say lrs out there uh, yes I someone can... else had a question go ahead please yeah uh, if lrs is down then i need to i mean uh, then i want to uh, relocate to zrs or Z, rs mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is it possible to do after lrs is down or before we have no. to change that before we have to do it reason being i'm saying no reason being if the region is down microsoft can not also copy your data meaning if you ch after the region is down when you change that particular tier from lrs to gzrs or grs and etc the concept of copying your data from one point to the other also fails because that particular endpoint is not there so microsoft cannot even copy your data so if microsoft cannot copy your data the data will not be available in the secondary endpoint which defeats the purpose reason being we create storage accounts whichever storage account you think are very critical we create them in something like grs out there mm -hmm. okay thank you also uh, kiran i have one more question uh, mm -hmm. can you uh, can you give some examples uh, when we need to raise tickets with uh, microsoft uh, what are the issues uh, i mean you have experience uh, nearly 8 to 10 mm -hmm. years right? uh, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. uh, i mean in which scenario scenarios uh, you raise ticket with microsoft any can you give me some examples sure definitely as in like we raise tickets for any scenario that is beyond our control see the point here is that when you're working in a company with azure or aws or gcb you are paying to that particular service provider so you can kind of raise tickets for any scenarios normally we what we do is that when we have an issue we firstly troubleshoot it out try to understand and try to check all the boxes from our end to see whether we are using the right set of data to see whether we were using the right let's say replication tier whether we did all the things right out there and all these things out there once even if i'm not able to let's say resolve it beyond a point of one or two hours we just go ahead raise a ticket with microsoft telling that you know what we need someone's help and we kind of let's say troubleshoot things out here so scenarios like data failure scenarios like we're not able to create storage accounts out there in a particular region we would like to understand so it can be a basic question or it can be advanced troubleshooting for anything we can we just go ahead and let's say raise tickets with microsoft out there and i'll also show you how to raise ticket with microsoft as such so does that answer your question 
uh, Raj, I think you had that one. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, after changing the configuration, it takes about 30 minutes to change LS or whatever else. 30 minutes data will backup, it will take in. Okay, whatever else 30 minutes data backup, it will take care of. No. Thing is that when you do a replication, meaning when you fail over, you only fail over because your primary region is not available. And when your primary region is not available, you won't even be able to write a data. So there is no point of data loss out there in that 30 minutes when it's trying to, let's say, change your tiers from, let's say, primary to secondary. The concept of data data loss is virtually not there. Reason being, in the primary center, you won't even be able to, let's say, copy the data because it's not available. That's the reason you're doing a failover as such. Also, one thing that I want you all to read through is these guys. There is a section for interview questions that I have separately prepared, which has both the static and also the dynamic questions that come up during an interview. And I have divided this accordingly with the services that we cover. So we cover Azure DevOps, we cover past services and all these things out. What you'll start doing is start reading about storage accounts. There are a couple of questions you might not probably understand, which is super fine, not a problem. But each and every question you read, and each and every answer that you you know kind of analyze i've also given some articles go through it understand what is the naming convention what is the logic behind naming convention and all these things so, so please do this and let me know if you have a question out there and the intention behind this session is not to go ahead and give a new topic but to introduce you all to you know what exactly are the interview questions out there i tend to do it for every topic. So once a topic is completed, like storage accounts, I go ahead and let's say revise this out. The other topic, virtual machine, I go ahead and do a revision out there. So I do one session like that for every, let's say one or two weeks, I go ahead, take it apart from the classroom session out there. So yes, uh, so that's pretty much it that I had from my end on what to cover and all these things. What I want you all to do is please go through these things. Please go through these articles. Let me know if you have any questions again. I'll be available on classes Azure DevOps at the gmail.com. I'll just post my email ID out here. And if you have a question, please go ahead. Uh, please introduce yourself on which batch you belong to and uh, what is your class timing and etc. And ask your question. I'll make, I'll make sure to answer that out within a couple of hours. Yes, any questions before I close, guys? Anything that I can take before I close? I have quick two minutes before I can close this out. So anything that I can take? Sir, can you get any alert from uh, Microsoft whether it is uh, the server is going to down in the data center in that area? Uh, you can, uh, you can, but you can also configure your own alerts, which we are going to look at. So if you just scroll down, right, there is something called alert mechanism where you can go and create your own alert rules and you can proactively get alerts out there. But if it's a global outage, then definitely, yes, you will get an alert from Microsoft in the form of an email or a phone call and all these things out. But you also have the capability to configure your own alerts as such. Okay. All right, so with that, I'll close the session a little earlier today. And from tomorrow, we'll again continue with our regular classes and we'll look into partial, we'll continue from there and we'll look into ARM and all these things out there. Please go through these questions, guys. What I want you to do is please go through these questions. Just write it down on the interview scenarios that you can, let's say, really look at. And if you have a question that you have heard in an interview and not covered in that particular document, let me know. I'll, I'll be more than happy to add that out with the explanation out there. Uh, thank you, guys, and have a good day ahead.